Doubting Thomas. What a way to be remembered. I mean, Thomas was one of Jesus' disciples. And in John chapter 11, when Jesus is preparing to go visit Lazarus, who had fallen asleep, all of the disciples are warning Jesus about going back to very hostile territory, to a place where the last time he visited, they wanted to stone him to death. Thomas was the only one who spoke up up and said, let's also go that we might die with him. But you don't remember brave Thomas, the willing to die with Jesus Thomas. No, it's doubting Thomas. After the resurrection, the Thomas who was willing to die with Jesus, he's seen Jesus die. The other disciples are now making this audacious claim that Jesus is alive. Well, no one's ever raised themselves from the dead, so I think we can understand why Thomas has some doubts. I didn't make Thomas an unbeliever, just made him a doubter. See, we have doubts too. And when you have doubts, you're in good company. What changes Thomas the doubter to Thomas the believer is when Jesus comes to him one week later. Jesus comes to Thomas with proof positive that he is resurrected and alive. Jesus speaks to Thomas as Thomas looks on the risen Jesus, and doubt gives way to faith. My God and my Lord. Every time the church celebrates the Lord's Supper, Jesus speaks, and you see him. He's sitting up there on the altar, disguised in bread and wine. He's there with his body and his blood for your forgiveness. Just as Jesus came to Thomas with his word and showed him his body, removing all doubt in Thomas, the same thing happens for you. Jesus comes with his words. Take, eat. Take, drink for the forgiveness of your sins. And he shows you his body and his blood in the bread and wine. And faith is created in you by his words. And with that sacrament, all doubt is removed. And he gives to you salvation that you may join with faithful Thomas to confess Jesus as your Lord, your God, your Savior.